Dude. I'm ready. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. Uh, we, and we are about to uh, extravaganza you with uh, another film discussion into the mind of Dustin, uh, since we are doing uh, meet, <laughs> a Dustin uh, uh, Meet the Cast month, uh, month uh, here, uh, ladies and ge uh, gentlemen. And uh, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that film uh, that we have just crawled to? Oh. Cute. You're, you're gonna extravaganza me. I need to prepare here. I need to mention extravaganza. It myself. <laughs> I've never been extravaganza before. This is a uh -oh, first Man, time well, experience. Now the pressure is on. Oh, oh trust me. So well, just, uh, just be gentle. We okay. It's a very erotic thing. Excuse me. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, which which what movie was it that movie? you were watching? I think uh, I think Dave watched the wrong alligator movie, man. Oh, uh, maybe maybe he watched a different movie called Crawl. <laughs> uh, oh man. Oh well, make, back to make sure to lube up. <laughs> Let me lick my nipple here for a moment. Uh, those scales get rough, bro. <laughs> Well, thoroughly ruined. Um, well, so we, well, at least I uh, watched the 1980 monster movie classic Alligator, uh, which is about, well, a giant alligator living in the sewers of either Chicago or St. Louis. It depends who you ask. Mm hmm. So this is kind of a, this is a fairly <coughs> special movie to me uh, because I saw it pretty young and it traumatized the crap out of me because of a scene that we will almost certainly touch upon. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I know what you mean. Traumatized yeah. me too. <laughs> I like how yeah. you know right away what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it uh, stays with you. But um, anyway, so the first time I saw this, I was maybe like five or six. And I loved every minute of it until we got to that scene. And I could not watch this movie again for years <laughs> afterwards. Like I would, I would watch, well, okay. I would watch it and then I would change the channel for that part. And then I would come back. Uh, but now it's easily one of my top five favorite movies of all time. And it's just such a, a solid, like enjoyable movie. So, like, everything about it works pretty well. Like, the effects are good. Uh, and a lot of scenes, they used a real alligator, like, just in, like, super mm -hmm. close-up. And you can you can tell when it's the puppet, but for the most part, it works. Uh, like, the story is pretty engaging and actually has sort of a surprising amount of depth kind of mm -hmm. secretly written into it by John Sayles. So, this yes. is a John Sayles' work. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love it. And and I'm, there really, is... I'm really eager to hear more about that. I was shocked to learn that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's kind of a there's kind of a hidden like class warfare, class consciousness kind of message in this movie. This is confirmed by John Sayles right away. By the way, like it's not you know weirdo movie reviewer reading something that's not there into it. Like this was no. on purpose. So this is the, the guy. This is the guy who wrote Maytwan about the start of the yeah. uh, unionization of the coal. And the, it, who did Silver City, which is a very, very political film. Yeah, John Sales doesn't shy away from these things. <laughs> yeah, so the way the alligator's attacks work, I'm just going to jump into that <coughs> aspect of it. The way the alligator's attacks kind of play out are it starts by attacking people in like the lower classes, like people, you know, like homeless people, people living around or near the sewers. So, well, first of all, the alligator is first acquired by somebody who's in like the upper middle class and it's flushed down the toilet where it's kind of left to fester in the sewers. Mm -hmm. And as it grows into like a serious menace, it becomes lashing out at people like in those lower classes. And if you'll notice the progression of its victims, you know, like, homeless people are, go are disappearing. You know, the people in charge of the city don't really seem to care all that much. And then sewer workers and police officers and small business owners it just kind of keeps amping up until the alligator is out of the sewers and it's tearing up a mansion before being driven back to the sewers so if you crash in those fucking garden parties man yeah <laughs> like it gets yeah. out of like it gets out of the sewers 
and starts atta- and attacks a few people in the suburbs, and then it moves, r- and then it heads straight for the mansion of the guy who created it, essentially. Mm-hmm. So there is... I don't want to f- completely spoil it, so I'm trying not to give away too much, but mm-hmm. it's there, We're and it's really fascinating. spoil the shit out of this movie. Oh, well, it's really, it's really fascinating. <laughs> it's kind of like my train of thought can only handle so much at one time. Um... But hmm. so it's it's a really fascinating thing to watch if you're aware of that, like, and to look out for. And I haven't seen this movie. So there's a movie called The Third Man, and there's actually a oh, third yeah, man. yeah, yeah. There's a, a third one. man. There's a third man reference in this at the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, after they've, well, obviously spoilers abound, but after this alligator is defeated. You know, it pans past a wall in the sewer and it says, Harry Lime lives, which is the guy from The Third Man. I missed yeah. that. Play, I, I, pl- I yeah. missed that <laughs> reference too, but uh, oh, yeah. Harry Lime was the one played by Orson Welles. Yeah. Who was great. Harry Lime? Could somebody tell me? Well, he was the villain in that film that everyone is searching mm-hmm. for, and he doesn't uh, come along until rather late in the movie, but boy, is he unforgettable. Ooh, There's yeah, also a you know, drawing. F- fuzzy little fruits tend to be, you know what I mean? <laughs> There's also a strong <laughs> reference to that character and that film That's in the early movie. Peter Jackson film, Heavenly Creatures. That was right. a fun, fun well, reference. Too. And speaking of hair, I think this movie, you know, like like all the, the commentary on class stuff maybe overshadows how they handle male pattern baldness with like oh, yeah. very there sensitive are, touch. Like running uh, jokes yeah. about like yeah. the main character is like, oh, like like older guys will say to him, it's like, oh, you know, I went through that too. You know, here's what you can do. You can get a toupee. And, and he's like, yeah. After like the third one, like the main character, I'm surprised he didn't like deck anybody. It's like, <laughs> all right, guys, that's enough. <laughs> well, apparently, uh, Forrester himself uh, suggested those jokes because of his own insecurities uh. about it, and he he mentioned it to Sales, and Sales liked it, and he's like, okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> like... Now, wasn't there something uh, before we go too much into first impressions? Mm-hmm. Uh, wasn't there something on the commentary tra- uh, track that had something to do with Wisconsin? Uh, oh yes, yes, there was. Uh, so this movie was pretty much was kind of heavily. It wasn't so much completely written by John Sayles <laughs> as heavily edited and made a passable narrative by John Sayles. So there was an original, there was an original script of this oh, yeah. and it took place here in Milwaukee. <laughs> and what made the alligator giant in that was it was, it wasn't very well fleshed out. Um, well, I'm just going to say it the way they said it on the commentary. <coughs> so in the original version of this, the alligator was in the sewers of Milwaukee and it got so big by eating like the suds from the breweries because oh, yes, <laughs> I was so old and that's why I'm sitting here the whole time. I'm like, please say it's got the Pat's Blue Ribbon. Because like, <laughs> yeah, so the, I think it actually said in that original script, like the alligator gets fat, you know, like the residents of Milwaukee off of Just the brewery. And it's like, ass wow, ass guys. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and John Sayles had like kind of like the best rebuttal of that. He's like, you know, and the residents of Milwaukee, I mean, although they are big and it's like, excuse me, <laughs> they're not giants. So we rewrote that. And apparently it, so, it, it used to end at like a sawmill somehow, which why would that be anywhere near? Near like inner city Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah, there were all kinds of problems with it. It's like, oh, it's an abandoned sawmill. You just like flick a switch and everything works. Like, what are you mm-hmm. what are you doing? So John Sales just kind of went nuts on the script. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> after I after I had the bravery to like rewatch this like in full, it became one of my favorite movies. And I actually wrote a graduate paper on reptiles in monster movies which has been kind of my driving force for creative things i want to do uh related to science and that can be read if you search for if you search herpetology horror show uh, that paper of mine is on the reptile report website and i'm really proud of it and i hope you check it out because i just love yeah, i'll give that a read things. later dude i love oh, all things like 
reptile related and especially yeah. in horror like bringing my two mm-hmm. like hobbies together mm-hmm. uh, I think and i linked just, that to us once before but i like <laughs> forgot to bookmark it so i'll link it to you guys again i think we can probably link it um in the comments on this video right <laughs> yeah we can definitely yeah. do a, a link that okay. in the co- yeah. comments of this uh, video Okay. Well, uh, just keep even... studying, Dustin, so we can uh, make our own even... big giant drunk alligator one day. <laughs> That's what it needs to happen. Yeah, there's even uh, there's even some academic writing on mm-hmm. sort of these class under themes. Like, I I wish I had had time to read that essay again, uh, because it's mm-hmm. a very good essay. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's kind of long though. It's like 15 pages, I think, which is a lot for academic mm-hmm. writing. Well, and for you, well, a non-experiment writing. Well, my my cool. paper my paper I think is like five or six, but uh, anyway, so there's there's just a lot to love in this movie. So it functions on like this deeper level where if you pay attention, you'll you'll notice things like that, and it'll maybe make you think a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or on the other hand, you can have a beer and just watch it as like an insane monster movie, which it also oh, yeah. works very well as. Yeah. Like the alligator is ridiculously large and it does ridiculous things. Like, it smashes through the street in one scene. I think Mm -hmm. that's my favorite scene. (laughs) Like, it just comes out of the sewer. Like, and it's... If you're a biologist of any kind, it'll probably give you a good laugh. Because, yes, while the screenplay may have been written by (coughs) John Sales, the film was directed by Louis Teague, who's probably best known other than this for the films Cujo and The Jewel of the Nile, uh, which are both great films, but not exactly... uh, high art by most people's standards. Hey, um, now. Although I did grow up, I grew up with the Jewel of the Nile. I love that one. <laughs> uh, anyway. Are you ready to do impressions? Mm. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for you guys to, I'm waiting oh. for you guys to do your impressions because I have, this okay. movie like excites me. I just love okay. it so much. I've seen it probably 30 times. I didn't have time to finish my watch of it, so I'm just going to go mm-hmm. off memory. So if my train of thought kind of derails mm-hmm. a little slightly, <laughs> I pause, um, feel free to jump in, and I'll be able to find my place pretty quick. This so, movie uh, also excites me, uh, not just because of the the Milwaukee angle of it. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I'm well, sorry to say... That part. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> but there are fat people here in Milwaukee, so uh, I'm I'm one of them. So, well, after um, quarantine, but, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I I relatively enjoy this uh, uh, film. I don't look. Uh, I don't compare it to other monster movies because I believe that this movie is the alligator movie. If you wanted to, a go-to movie to uh, to go see, this was the killer alligator. That stalked the streets of Milwaukee. <laughs> Change yeah, to Chicago. Well, or yes. Chicago. Wh- or St. Louis. <laughs> or wherever the hell you uh, ended up. Friggin' Chigakwe, dude. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Thank Chicago. So it we... <laughs> also scared the shit out of me when I was a kid uh, myself. I mean, uh, uh, there was the part where, uh, where you know, the, uh, the newspaper ma- uh, man got photos of the jaws of this th- uh, thing yeah. you know and and he ended up uh, getting dis- disappeared and then of course th- there is the later um pool incident which i'm sure we'll get into well we'll get to that when it happens <laughs> but um, one thing i one thing i want to uh, comment on too is we did just do our episode on crawl and these are those are both these are both like very good like reptile monster movies uh, especially mm-hmm. well these are probably the two best alligator movies I can think of. Like, if we're talking specifically alligators, not crocodiles. And they're kind of both on... They're on opposite ends of the spectrum, I think. Because you can watch this as just, like, a fun, like, popcorn monster movie. Or you can watch it with a little bit of that deeper interpretation. Um, whereas with Crawl... Crawl kind of... Crawl is kind of more on the dramatic side, and it has Mm -hmm. very realistic alligators. And Mm -hmm. while this movie does use real alligators for many of its effects, uh, Mm -hmm. the scenes where it actually has to interact with a human are this titanic animatronic crocodile, which you can... It's a very good practical effect, but you can tell, you know? Yeah. (laughs) 
I mean, there's a couple scenes where they do it like fucking hard justice, like when you first see it in the sewers. But yeah, after that, you pretty much know that there's just. Uh, I think that's my favorite. Right I think that's my favorite still from the movie. So they're uh, they're looking for. They've heard rumors of, about the alligator, but they don't really believe them yet. So they're just kind of poking around, and they pull out a flashlight and they're checking the map. And as they're kind of turning the flashlight beam around. Like in a grate behind them, you can see the alligator, and there's a bit of the light catches its eye, and we get like a red glint. Out off, we get we get red glowing eyes off this thing for like a split second, and it's so menacing. Are you like, talking about words? Internet? Words fail like very are early you, on, like first talking, fifteen minutes. Are you talking about like well, off in that side? Um, al uh, 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 like underneath the sewer, in right that away. in that like culvert. Yeah, um, yeah. That that moment creeped me the fuck out because he was just sitting there. The fuck? Oh yeah, and like the way it like you know the way it slides in front of that opening as old poor Kelly is walking out there. Uh, <laughs> that's like you know I think the closest they get to how reptiles tend to or like alligators tend to attack shit like all they watch. sneak attack like that you know. <laughs> They uh, watch for a little bit and then they strike. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean it's not exactly your National Geographic just uh, chomp the wildebeest kind of a thing, but you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> well, technically, I read a little bit of a book on crocodile attacks, which crocodiles and alligators similar means of attack, and there was an old saying that was in the book. It's like you know the first time the croc watches and you don't know it's there, the second time the croc moves a little closer and you can spot it, the third time watch out. <laughs> and this is on like three different days so like the first day like the crocodile notices you and it observes you a little bit the second day it observes you from a little bit closer the third day that's when it's going to come after you <laughs> which now, so, something that we didn't cover in crawl that also applies here that's an interesting little real life factoid with alligators is that uh, they can't they can't see directly in front of them and that's why they have to bite to the side and so the best way to avoid an alligator, if one is nearby, is to keep going in a straight line. Bro, I well, just stay the fuck can, out of any state they or can country run that has like a that. lot <laughs> faster than you think on well, land. No, yeah. one, no, no wonder the drunks couldn't escape. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not saying they can't run fast. Rough. I'm just saying, like you know, that's the best way to escape one is if you run straight ahead. Oh, so, that, so that I'm way they don't, don't completely count on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, uh, again, it's not foolproof, but it's better than running to the side or trying to do any number of things. Mm -hmm. well, what happened uh, if you yeah, just or, rushed that yeah. bitch, like, just intimidate the shit out of it? No, you die. Oh, actually, that was another <laughs> thing we didn't get to, we didn't get to cover in Crawl. Like, in Crawl, they had very realistic attacks where, mm -hmm. like, the crocodile would bite and it would clearly hurt, but it didn't seem to do a ton of damage, like, one of the, I think, criticisms of Crawl is, like, they should have been more badly hurt when they would get bitten. However, a bite is not immediate death. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, and, uh, and I did I did like that they did the literal alligator death roll in there, which, again, that's, that's a real behavior that they do. Exactly. Whereas which, in this, the alligator bites you, it's immediate destruction. <laughs> yeah, well, this, this thing is, sure, like... Yeah. You know, but this thing is basically like vengeance. Yeah, I mean this thing this, this, thing, this thing is, is one this yeah. thing is one step short of like a crocosaurus or something like that. You know? Uh Dinosuchus. Uh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down for all of that. Uh, Di but... Dinosuchus is a prehistoric crocodilian that's about as big as so in the movie posters uh, for this movie, it's that, that up. the movie posters <laughs> for this say it lives fifty feet below the sit beneath the city. It's 35 feet long. It weighs 2,000 pounds, and it's about to break out. It would weigh a heck of a lot more than 2,000 pounds. Yeah. And 35 yeah. feet yeah. long yeah. is what that prehistoric crocodile, well, prehistoric yeah. alligator, well, crocodilian. Uh, Crocodilicus. Dino Dinosuchus is pretty close in appearance to a modern alligator, so that's kind of why I use that as a parallel. I just like the word, honestly. I'm a Dinosaur Dinosaur Dinosaur. teacher. So I think a cool I, word to say. I think I cut you off there, Brandon. I'm I'm sorry about that, bud. Well, I got I excited say, and uh, ran you guys my, over. So, uh, you uh, guys, you guys talk for a bit. <laughs> my first impression of this, uh, getting back to um, 
first impressions is uh, actually uh, on this show because it was uh, Dustin that first brought me uh, to uh, knowing about the film. I read the article and, that you wrote. And oh, you. so I wanted to see it. And then I tried to say, okay, so let me see if I can find it physical. <laughs> and then I saw... Well, I guess I'm not going to see that anytime soon because the only other way I could see it was on YouTube in a very blurry screen. It's like, well, eventually he's going to uh, suggest it for the show. And uh, then Dave, or he will be able to provide me with a, a nicer copy to watch than I what can. I can get. And... Uh, uh, but we still ended up watching that YouTube, yes, we <laughs> that did. kind of blurry YouTube video instead. So my first viewing of it was uh, not very good on the visual. It looked like somebody had thrown water on the camera lens through most of it. So maybe that was appropriate for what we were doing. So <laughs> uh, first impression is it did remind me a lot of Jaws, a lot of that. And uh, I had a lot of... Uh, problems following the plot at first but i feel like i need to see this multiple times in order to truly understand it i can in, send in you way. i can send you a copy of it after the show if you need so first impression is i, I need to probably watch this again because i don't feel like i got uh as much out of it as uh, as i should have yeah, well, that's that's basically how I felt about it, too. And I, I don't think the YouTube video thing helped any uh, in that regard. But, like, I yeah. I noticed a lot of structural comparisons to Jaws. And, obviously, the timeline adds up as far as uh, that's when the Jaws ripoff started to, uh, you know, started to enter the marketplace. Um, now it I, is definitely among them, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, and again, I, I would like to see it again because I totally didn't pick up on the things that you mentioned, not to say that they're not there, because uh, I'm sure that they are, especially since he explicitly said so. But um, yeah, like at the time, I was just like, I didn't really see. I, I also went into this thing totally blind. Like I didn't do, I, I didn't know anything about it. I just was like, okay, alligator, boom. And, um, you know, so it, uh, yeah. yeah, alligator, I mean, so, boom. <laughs> exactly, which I mean, I did, and yeah, it's it is what it is. It's a you know pretty giant alligator. I guess like in my head, I was sort of like, well, I'd love to see something along the lines of like you know what what say uh, you know crawl gave me, which is alligators that really did behave like alligators and were that that size and everything. Now this again, th that's this is what happens when you go in blind. This is this, this, this one was as if you took a slasher movie and put it in the arms of an alligator. Well that or I was gonna say arms. like uh this this is more like a steroided up okay, alligator geez. that's like this is more like like you said like a monster movie that has a <laughs> abnormally large alligator as the monster and, and it is a killing machine. Yeah, well, exactly. And to do something like convincing like crawl back then, they probably had to shoot it like that movie Roar or whatever with all the lions and shit, and oh, someone yeah. would have died. You know? Yeah, there's, <laughs> like, there's no, there's no way they could have done a movie like that back then, and that's that's I understand that. It's just more so of like, um, like at the time I said, okay, it's, so it's called Alligator, and I guess that based on just that title, I was expecting something a little bit uh more reasonable uh, of a more reasonable scale it wasn't you know crocosaurus it wasn't you know some kind of cheese tastic title you know it's like it's just the word alligator and so it leads me to believe that it's meant to be taken somewhat seriously but i think if you're looking at it through the like you said the the steroided up monster movie uh alligator equivalent if you're looking at it through that paradigm, then you can definitely get enjoyment out of it. I just, I didn't you know can what watch to watch it both ways. That's part of the appeal. Oh, yeah. Well, I, and again, I, w I would like to see it again, knowing that that subtext is there. I just, I, I don't think watching the YouTube video helped anything. And it, uh, I did notice Ooh. more, uh, I did notice more of the Jaws ripoff elements in terms of characterization and structure. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I imagine some of that was just, well, marketplace necessity. This is a big movie. Let's copy it. You know, which what, that happens, that happens what, all the time. But what are some, what are some elements that you th think that this movie ripped off of Jaws? 
Oh well, oh, Robert Forster, our main main character, is obviously <laughs> our our bro, our uh, Chief Brody equivalent, right, and right. you know the the um the Matt Hooper equivalent is a female this time. Yeah. But you know, we got a lot hotter this time around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, um, and uh, I don't recall there being like a seasoned croc hunter that could have been the Quint equivalent. No, yeah, uh, he was at the yeah, there was there was a, a, there was a big game hunter character. How'd you miss? Yeah. Yeah. How'd you oh, miss crazy croc? dude from Above the Law who's the like shooting fucking Steven Seagal up with the truth serum and shit. Like um, I was yeah. freaked out by that dude since then. Yeah. Yeah. So. Rocket yeah, shows up. I'll shoot the alligator, and then oh, he like, that guy, like a yeah. punk. Yeah, yeah and it basically guy, eats them right. just like in Jaws. Like and, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is just a thought. I don't know if this is true or not, but um, in a sense, turning the Hooper character into a female that romances mm -hmm. the main character may have been a sly reference to the Jaws book. Yeah, because in the book, Hooper had an affair with Brody's wife. That was something we left out in the Ooh. movie. Yeah, yeah. For the, well, book, the book is the book is uh, not as good as the movie. Oh, that, uh, oh well, them, well, speaking of speaking of the Jaws book, there was a uh, corrupt politician, and there was even an organized crime exactly uh, conne yeah. connection, but, which that's but, directly from the yeah. book. But here's uh, uh, okay. Uh, from the way that Dustin um, introduced this movie to uh, to us, and and that Milwaukee uh, you know <laughs> reference, if you look at it from that perspective, uh, you can think of this as a political grab at the uh, uh, politicians in Milwaukee, and uh, 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 possibly a you know. Uh, a stab at the corruption within the political endeavor. You yes, would know so. that more than I would. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the Milwaukee part was cut out. The Milwaukee part was cut yeah. out by John Sales to be more like Chicago, which I think you can pro definitely make a statement about oh, Chicago yeah. politics. Oh, I think yeah. even more so than in Milwaukee. Well, well, I was going to say, oh, Chicago man. politics are a bit more <laughs> notorious for corruption across yeah. the country. <laughs> yes. I mean, and, the Milwaukee um, politicians I know are pretty cool. <laughs> uh, in Chicago or in Milwaukee? In Milwaukee. Yeah. I mean, I was I was going to say, out of the two, you know, I, I think Chicago would most definitely have the more notorious reputation in that regard. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it, it's one of those. Uh, yeah. So th those elements were more what stuck out to me when I was watching it. And that sort of, you know, I was like, well, you know, it's it's obviously of its time and clearly it's trying to do what you know movies do which is something successful uh you know rip rip it off or or emulate mm -hmm. it you know uh and that's uh and that's just that's not even a knock you know because you can have a good rip off it's just um see you know, it's I, just that you know that that's just the realities of the marketplace now whether or not that was john sales himself or whoever else the was writing it you know i could believe either but um you know, See, it, it, I, I never ahead. at the time thought uh, thought that they were uh, trying to rip off uh, 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 Jaws in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but it's uh, so clearly there. That. It is, but I mean, I oh, could yeah. see some of the That's logic, too, of that. Even Jaws is kind of an obvious idea, right? Like, it we was have, just successful. I'm sure before that, someone was like, killer bear, you know? I mean, but then, Orca, and Orca Grizzly, Piranha, Grizzly, Grizzly, almost any Grizzly. animal movie in that time yeah, period was, you can just do was it, going after you know. Jaws. Yeah, I, I know, right. That, that's, but it's, it's like, I'm, it just makes sense to do, you know well, what I mean? That's, so that's, it's like... I, it's, I'm not knocking it on that level specifically, because I know it was not the first or the only one. Uh, it was just more so, like, a good example, actually, is the original Piranha, because... That's a movie with a killer fish, obviously, uh, several of them, of course. Um, but stru structurally speaking, uh, I'd say hundreds. Well, okay. like st structurally speaking, it does not match uh, Jaws beat for beat. Like the the big uh, climactic be beach. Uh, well, it's obviously it's a river, not an ocean. But you know, they, they save the big feasting scene for the end. For the big climax as opposed to the middle which is what jaws does um 
and there's no uh like there's a little bit of river boating but it's not quite the you know the sea hunt second half of jaws or anything like that there aren't these, th th there aren't these obvious like character equivalents uh it present in there the only thing it really has in common is the fact that it is a killer fish movie and the poster vaguely resembles jaws but like structurally it really doesn't have any uh obvious like parallels there it takes um, a lot tropes i mean a right, little bit but right. it's not it's nowhere near as obvious yeah that's well, more what I was my point was at. maybe more that like i hold it less against a jaws ripoff because it's there's such mm -hmm. obvious ideas that, yeah. Then I would maybe like a Friday the Thirteenth ripoff. That's just matching mm. that movie. Well, that's beat, that's know, and that's fair. That's fair because again, uh, you know, killer animals as a concept. I mean, obviously, that's older than the written word. Mm -hmm. You know, it's older. That's as old as cave paintings, of course. So I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, that's that's not a new idea. Now, Friday the Thirteenth. You know, that's a more specific. Uh, right. formula with which you can rip something off but it's like, just come on, uh, dude you didn't even come up with your own animal you just put a dick on the chick at the end of the movie <laughs> like, <it's>, uh, <laughs> I, I take issue with that more so than i do a jaws rip off you know uh, oh you're referring right. to sleepaway camp um uh, yeah <laughs> well, but the, uh, I, I guess that uh, hey, that was just... a pretty brilliant twist for its time. It actually. was. Yeah. It still it fucks was. people up. I just did it to my girlfriend recently. No warning. <laughs> Well, it's and just, then I just it, didn't say a word. I just let her enjoy it. You know, I was just more <laughs> observing how obvious the character equivalence in the structure was. Now, again, does yeah. that necess does that necessarily equate to bad? Not really. Yeah. It was just something that, without the additional um, social subtext that you know Dustin pointed out, without that, then you n notice more of the ripoff elements. But yeah. given that he obviously explicitly put that in there then uh you know then there is more that is shining uh, uh through it than uh one might have necessarily gotten or at least i did but again mm -hmm. i would like to see it again and i'd like to see it uh in proper picture qual proper yes. picture quality and oh, one yeah. where i can stop yeah. and start and rewind and all that because like part of the, the tough part was when we did our viewing party like it was not good quality. The uh, window was StreamYard anyway, you know, it was smaller than full screen. I couldn't go full screen, couldn't stop, couldn't, you know, uh, go back and say, okay, what did he say? You know, what was that? You know, I couldn't do all that. And so, nor was the screen quality good enough to where I could notice details too well. So, I mean, you know, that's part of it. And um, so, yeah, generally speaking, I like to watch stuff, you know, in a way that I'm oh, trying yeah. to replicate the way that the filmmaker intended yeah. me to see it. Uh, so, so yeah, this, that... is, uh, this is a somewhat difficult movie to see because yes. it only has it only has one D it has one DVD release, mm -hmm. um, and it's and it by has Lion a it's by Lionsgate from it's mm -hmm. from Lionsgate in 2007, and it's long out of print. So mm. a copy of this movie on DVD will actually, run you like it forty has bucks. Two legal ones. Mm -hmm. Well, there is the UK one. one. I was just there I was is the UK just, one. There are uh -oh. imports too. I was just looking on on eBay just out of curiosity, and forty would be a bargain from what I can tell. Oh my yeah. god. It seems to be running more like sixty to seventy. Oh, but, it's up uh, there in that Godzilla versus yeah. Biomonte territory. Well, well it's because, it's because, because Lionsgate is really stingy with their titles, and they refuse to release anything in their vast catalog of amazing stuff. They're so, really stingy with what if they, footage you can they, use in a YouTube they, video they, too. If the they had put Alligator and Alligator Two yeah. on a Vestron video, like yeah. oh god. That'd be awesome. They would have sold. I don't think they would have sold a million copies, but they would have sold like a hundred thousand easy. I think like, this would be a prime. Get, get this as like this would be perfect for Vestron video line. Yeah, I would say it'd be a, a, a or Arrow or a shout release or something. Yeah, Arrow. Oh, yeah, shout yeah. Yeah. anybody. Shout, but, shout. I've been talking to Shout for years about this. They say Alligator yeah. is one of their dream titles, but uh, Lionsgate just refuses to let anybody uh, like touch it. Uh, fuck it, give it a criterion, man. Oh, wait, 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 what is it? What, who do they think they are? The mouse? That's well, I, I don't pretty know. much, they're, yeah. I, I they're probably, they're they probably are the negative mouse. opinion of Lionsgate. They are the mouse now. Well, they're, so, they're probably trying to hold on to whatever they got, right. you know, cause I, from what I understand, Lionsgate is looking to be acquired by other companies. Um, yeah. And they're different. Sure they like, I, 
Well, I think Buy was, Lionsgate, uh, Shout Factory. Do it. Well, I think it was, uh, well, I think Amazon. You will make a billion of, dollars in Blu-rays. Well, we make a deal with them or something. I, I think you know? I think Amazon was looking at buying them, but I don't know what came of that because uh, oh. obviously they got their hands full with the AMC theaters and stuff. So I mean, I don't know if anything was coming of that. I know that there's uh, several buyers interested, but I know that Lionsgate just as an entity. Uh, is going is looking to be acquired by someone bigger. Because personally, uh, like Lionsgate has great releases. I just it just drives me nuts how difficult it is to get their titles like on home video yeah. in like the formats that I am used to and prefer. You know what well, I mean? That, that, that and some of their uh, well, at all first of their stuff is bare bones or well, that, that like, and some of their quality. Quality. and their their Blu-ray their Blu-ray Blu transfers or their sometimes their 4K transfers. You know, like at, when they first come out, they aren't necessarily of the best quality. And then they have to release another edition later that actually has a good print that transfer. Fixes like it. The, exactly. So with the, the Total Recall one is the good example of that. You know. So now, Jake, one. Jake, my boy. My, yeah, yes, my boy. Yeah, Sorry, Jake, connect with me. Jake, uh, yeah. <laughs> what were yeah. you saying? Jake, what, what was your what was what? your impression? What were we well, now, yeah, I'm trying to let him say it for hey. 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jake. Um, so, and along those lines, my impressions were colored by the extreme difficulty of this title. Uh I hadn't really looked into acquiring it beforehand, so I wasn't sure. I, I just learned all that. But I ended up watching the YouTube link, and yeah, it's a crap transfer. It really is. It's it, it, That whole scene you were talking about earlier where they're in the sewers, I caught the bare, the, the, the broad strokes of that scene, let's put it that way. I did not get details, so I didn't really get the impact that you apparently did with that scene um well let me tell you something buddy the mm -hmm. is not a whole lot better no. uh, uh, it's not okay. well it's got to be at least a little better oh uh, it's better it's just not well, and as far as, well, I, as I would have liked to see it full screen because i mean stream yard well, wouldn't let us do full actually screen. well dan i was about to say i did have that option of going because i wasn't able to join you guys for the viewing party I watched it afterwards, and um, I had the option of flipping back and forth, and uh, it. I ended up watching it smaller uh, because it just looked really blurry if you blew it up. Like uh, I mean, yeah. it just, you didn't really yeah. gain anything by doing no. that. No. Yeah. Okay. So it was unfortunate, but um, in terms of the overall impressions of the movie itself, I found it very enjoyable in a sense, a little cheesy. I mean, you know, but yeah. it, it, it overall, I was I was fascinated by the pedigree. I mean, utterly fascinated. When I learned John Sales was attached, I was like, I was utterly fascinated by that. And I like Robert Forster, the late great Robert Forster. Uh, he is he's uh, always an enjoyable actor and it was nice seeing uh seeing him in this uh, much younger than I'm used to <laughs> <laughs> much younger than I'm used to so that was kind of uh kind of fun and Robin Riker who plays his co-star was very cute it's too bad she was so blurred <laughs> a lot of but, that's down um, screen issues my dudes like you're watching it on far newer screens than a VHS rip should be viewed on for one thing uh, <laughs> I, I just found one that was oh, like yeah. 480p watched it on my old monitor mm -hmm. over here it looked basically mm -hmm. like I remember it looking on tape which it obviously isn't you know 4k right. quality or anything but it was pretty crisp as far as the VHS rip goes but and I, I watched and a I lot of tape so that's not like out of the ordinary for me. Yeah, that might have been an issue for me too. Is that I intentionally got a computer with a really high quality screen. It may have suffered by compare by comparison. The rip I watched of Crawl w looked great. I mean, you know. Oh so, yeah, dude, it's that, that makes yeah. a huge difference because like those a lot of the Mill Creek multi packs. If well, I watch the them digital, on my TV, the digital copy we gave you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, calling yeah. it a rip makes it sound illicit. Well, the the one I watched on Epics now, that's how I watched mm -hmm. Crawl, and obviously that was, you know, streaming and it looked great. You know, it was uh, 
I think it was actually in 4K, and I got to watch it, uh, you know, with my 4K Amazon Fire Stick on my 4K TV. So it was pretty stunning to look at, and and that movie did have really good cinematography, and that was oh, yeah. partially a problem with the transfer of Alligator, but also I think just technically speaking, like you know, I, I like I love stylishly dark films, uh, but this like in the sewers, especially like there were moments where it was perhaps a little too dark to where you couldn't figure out what was going on. Yeah. But again, a lot of that was probably that. a lot of that was probably the transfer's fault or, or the fact that we were watching it on YouTube oh, on, yeah. on StreamYard well, and all that stuff. So it's like I I would love someday to not only get a proper transfer of it, but be able to watch it again with all the knowledge and with mm-hmm. being able to tell what everything is and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah and like I said, my favorite, like, quick scene too in the sewer where you just barely see like the alligator Mm -hmm. like and just the red of its eyes Mm -hmm. um that probably looks horrible on the youtube and i bet you totally missed it i i remember that um but it would look better better. i was digging on all that shit man i mean and like i said I, i think uh it just being in a you know I'm not, I'm no like screen scientist, but it's pretty proven method with the shittier screens. So not that you guys necessarily have an option for that, but I will say that in terms of VHS rips go, we were Hmm. blessed with one of that clarity. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) It could have been a lot worse. Uh, but yeah. what, 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 you know, what were your overall impressions despite the quality issues and shit, Jake? I mean, just, you know, as a whole. Oh, well, I mean, like I said, I thought it was pretty enjoyable. It was interesting. It was, uh, uh, I, 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 well, there, it, I, I watched it, I watched it after I watched Fury, and it was definitely a more entertaining film and upbeat film than that one was. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah. It was, uh, and and again, little things, the people involved. I, I get a lot of amusement out of that uh, and interest out of that. Um, I find it interesting and amusing that you had two people, notable people, where this was their last film, um, Dean Jagger and Sue Lyon. Uh, and then, of course, less amusing, but no less interesting that both Miss Lyon and Robert Forster died last fall. So they both like very recent passings. Uh, so the, 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 those little similarities, I've just found that strange. I didn't realize Sue Lyon's movie career was so short. I mean, she went from Lolita to this in 18 years, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> so that was interesting. But um yeah, overall, it was an interesting film. I, 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 I would, I think I would get more out of it with a better quality. And if I ever have the opportunity to watch it again, yeah. and clearer, I'll probably try to. You know, it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of funny. At one point, I had four <laughs> copies of the DVD for this movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, you should have sold them on eBay. <laughs> I sold one of them uh, to Dave, actually. Uh, uh, yep. It's kind of amazing how it happened, too. So. I I don't really hang out there much anymore, but on Facebook, I was part of horror collecting groups. Mm-hmm. And so I'd been looking for Alligator for a while. Mm-hmm. And one day I'm at a friend's house and there's just a sealed copy of it just kind of lying around. And it's like, what the hell? Uh, yeah, this confiscate was, that. This was like a couple right. weeks. This was like a week before my birthday. And I was like, oh, and so I had to pretend I didn't see it. And I indeed got a new sealed oh. copy of Alligator for my birthday. <laughs> it was in such perfect, pristine, mint condition that I didn't want to open it. Oh, there you um, go. And I still have it unopened on my shelf. Um, however, when I wrote the reptile paper that I'm so proud of and can't shut up about, I wanted to be able to see it. So... I was asking around in the different like horror groups, you know, Hey, does anybody have a copy of this? And I had no luck. And then I just happened to trip over somebody selling one on eBay for 24. Mm. And so I immediately bought that. And then like, you know, still seeing like how much it, it sold for. Cause at the time it was like 45 bucks. So my friend actually got it. He admitted to me, it's like, yeah, I, I got them to go down to the 45 and it's like do you have any idea how great of a deal you actually got um so 
I had a second copy at that point. And then somebody in one of the horror groups messaged me. It's like, hey, uh, do you want mine? I'll do it for 20. And it's like, well, okay, sure. And then about three or four weeks late after that, uh, I got a call from one of the local like movie used movie places. It's like, hey, uh, you put a whole, you put an alert on a movie called Alligator. Like, if we got it in, you should <laughs> like come. Dedicated. You should, if you if we got it in, you should we should give you a call to let you to see if you wanted it. It's like, okay, I had completely no, forgotten about this. And they're like, well, we just got a copy in. How much do you want? You know, think expecting to hear like twenty. It's like, we've got it for six bucks. Do you want it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll be there in twenty Dude, minutes. That's the, that's the Lord's work right there. Just building <laughs> so a little had, brood of gator I babies. Some, I had something I was really supposed, really important. I was supposed to do at the time, so I, I basically just dropped what I was doing and went to go get. But it was six dollars. I mean, uh, yeah. I think I still have right. the price tag on that one. And then uh, Dave bought the one that I paid the lady on Facebook for. And I still have three copies of this movie. I have like my shelf copy. I have I have only gotten like I think Dave got the second best condition copy though because they were almost all like water damaged, which is why they Dude, were life cheap, in the apparently. sewers. It's rough. But, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a it was a crazy. You're hoarding copies of the movie so that way it can be like your. Well, I actually Your coronavirus emergency fund. <laughs> I actually have. Uh, so when I was doing research for it, I found an article that I shared with you guys: uh, "America Down the Toilet," uh, "Urban Myths and Alligator," and I also found out that in the library network for UWM, uh, where I go, they had access to a lever-bound copy of the original script by Sales. And so I was able to check that out, and there are there are a few things in the script that are different. Like there's like a whole subplot with like the alligator hunter, um, who's you know not a dick. And actually, when they made Alligator Two, a lot of the stuff from the script, like for that guy, was used for an alligator hunter character in Alligator Two. Um, this is all just kind of my assumption because there's no information on Alligator 2. Alligator 2 is even harder to see than Alligator 1. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I've ever I mean, seen it maybe more than once. Like, it's 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 appeared on TV before, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, it TNT. doesn't even... Yeah, it doesn't even have... Well, I think I saw it on USA, personally, but it doesn't even have, like, a US release, which Alligator was lucky to get. Um... Let That's alone <laughs> Lionsgate even bothered to put like extras on it. Like I'm so happy they did that, but at the same time, it shows kind of an unusual amount of care for a title from Lionsgate. At least a title that's not like Saw or one of their big tent poles. <laughs> See, but, incidentally, uh, I don't think I've ever seen this movie on DVD. Uh, I used to rent it. As, I'm pretty sure our background with it's fairly similar as far as how we were to expose it. Very rare. Uh, uh, I was. I'm a little older than you, I think. So maybe I, yeah. I, I had the privilege to rent it a ton, you know? Uh, and yeah. so it was one that definitely we would, we would pick up from time to time, you know, when we wanted to change it up and not just watch Jaws again. Uh, and then, you know, as I got older, a buddy of mine named Keegan used to really like to double feature this with Chud. So, you know, that was... Like, that was okay, like it one. works. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. It really is a, a a treat to double feature the two. I love Chud. And I Chud, could, Chud's I amazing. And, and, I, and I have a, spe a special place in my heart for Chud the Bud. So, Chud the Chud. That's the second one. Um, theme song, right? That's the second one I remember uh, from a child. Chud. Just on repeat. <laughs> And dude, you know, I don't think I actually really full because most of the time I watched those with him, we were drunk and shit. So I don't think I really probably fully appreciated some of the like, you know, the class commentary undertones and things or the male pattern baldness. I don't think I, I was really yeah, digging you, you on. You really that. don't notice until somebody is like, "Hey, did you see this?" And you're like, "What?" And you watch the movie and it's like, "Oh shit, this has been here the whole time." Mm -hmm. Well, and like another little touch that stood out to me for sure is where the guy comes in trying to claim to be a serial killer because of the the bodies being chopped up in the sewers, you know, like, you know, people were assuming it was like, and they even ask him at that press conference if it's like a, 
a Jack the Ripper type situation or something like that. And you no get that comment. psycho comes in with the, the bomb or the fucking radio strapped to his chest, which does yeah, come into play I like later. That part a lot because I thought that they that that was something I'd never really seen in a movie before where they were handling it like relatively calmly. <laughs> well, and, and just that touch of it, because you think back yeah, in the eighties, serial below. killers, it was still the golden age of that shit. And you did have those quacks that would try to like claim credit for the crimes to be notorious and even though they had nothing to do with them you know and i like the way they handle it in the movie because it just happens and then they move on and then the fucking radio comes into play again you know yeah they need a detonator at the end of the movie and so they use this guy's contraption like they just steal it from the evidence locker (laughs) it's awesome that they don't come right out and explain why the wacko was trying to claim to be the serial murderer because it was a common thing back in the the decade you know so i I thought that was Mm -hmm. an interesting subtle thing i took away from it this time but overall like you know i would echo the same sentiments as dustin's just a rad beer and popcorn movie if you want it to be that uh you know if you want to look a little deeper into it there's there's some more there and terms of the cast i think it's a pretty pretty flawlessly cast everybody does a great job i don't think that the police chief guy is the cheesiest character everyone else is fairly convincing to me actually even uh the crazy mother (laughs) (laughs) what the fuck he ran out with a knife i ain't even gonna go after him that kid was a savage too uh, <laughs> actually my favorite is the my favorite character in that is the pet store owner i don't know why i saw uh, i saw like shades of betty white at the end of uh, lake classic <laughs> that guy was evil selling puppies to the fucking yeah. mad scientist yeah, but he, he like, would feed the alligator uh, he's selling them as pets like <laughs> he would feed the alligator though with the uh, dead bodies. So oh, okay. I see where you're going with that. I got a still an animal go the hill vibe in that beginning part with uh, you know, making the uh, you know, get getting the animals for experimentation purposes. Oh, he talks about cutting their larynx and shit. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like if I watched yeah, this with that... my girlfriend, she'd be mad at me before we even got to like any of the well, hey, that guy, shit, you know. Well, hey, that guy gets one of the nastiest deaths in the whole movie. So Indeed. Justice is served. Uh, that dude, that well, scientist. Okay. I don't know if you guys have seen Blood Sucking Freaks. Yeah, I have. I, I don't know if it's the same dude. Yeah. I didn't bother to look it up, but it looks oh. a lot like that doctor in Blood Sucking Freaks that's like sucking the girl's brains out of her skull with a straw. <laughs> uh, oh, i saw it i saw it on um last drive-in that was a uh oh my oh, i love it dude i love every bit of blood sucking <laughs> freaks that dick sandwich at the end if you look closely in the in the fucking yeah. crowd there's a girl with a fucking dick and a hoagie bun like it's it's, it's just one of my Don't favorite they, like, little close stuff. up on it though like it's pretty they hard. do at the end and a lot of people miss. that doesn't register what it is man it's on my t-shirt for it too but it's like done in such a way where you know unless you know what it is it just looks like she's holding a sandwich i love it yeah i like uh i like how was that jericho who was on last drive-in he's talking about it's like you know i love this movie but what kind of makes because it's ridiculous but what kind of only makes it bearable though with like the violent stuff that they show is that like the actresses are really bad? It's like you know we're turning yeah, the button screws, and they're like, "Ow!" Uh. Where <laughs> oh, like you know, stock, if, like if Rob Zombie made this movie, like you wouldn't be able to watch it. You like you would pass out. And it's like, yeah, that's. Wow. Yeah. Oh man, Sadu too. That fucking that main carnival like magician dude. The door. Uh, <laughs> It's a good one. If you haven't seen Blood Sucking Freaks, fuck with it. It's fucked up. I, not, I, wouldn't, not safe I wouldn't call Blood Sucking Freaks a good one. <laughs> hey, so, you know. If you, want, like, your if you want like a really man. if you want like a really gross exploitation movie, Blood Sucking Freaks will end you. Um uh, I, I personally didn't like Blood Sucking Freaks. So I, I just want oh, to I be, love it. I love the I'm going to uh, of that Sadu guy. I love I love the whole comic commentary on how if people well, think I'm, something's I'm, entertainment you probably could kill someone in front of them you know uh but yeah it's you know it is well, i mean it i'm is. i'm he gonna, sh- a lot I'm, like gonna him, I'm gonna share this one with like a lot of people i know so i don't i don't really want a whole lot of talk about blood sucking freaks on it because that'll that'll end me pretty quick uh, <laughs> with the people i want to show this to oh wow i didn't <laughs> realize this was that kind of show uh <laughs> 
Well, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> he looks no, a lot like that dude. If you're, he does look a lot like that dude from from Blood. They're just Creek. movies, people. These guys are not <laughs> to like what I like. You know, Dustin doesn't need to endorse <laughs> something for me to like it. You know, or vice versa. I mean, it's you know. Well, if like my mom or like one of the people I want to pitch my uh, reptile dedic if if one of the people I wanted to pitch my dedicated like animal horror analysis thing to like oh yeah none of you guys should watch that and I accept full responsibility for the topic that you brought up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm 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 throwing I'm throwing my best effort into this one here. <laughs> So I want to try to keep digressions to a bit of a minimum, too, uh, as I extend the digression like an idiot. Ah, but no, he, he definitely does. Actually, I think you might be right. The more I, I picture that character in my head now. It might be the dude. I didn't like, get a chance very well to look could it be. up. But even, even better that the alligator like fucks him up. <laughs> yeah, he was a twisted piece of crap and... and you know the movie that shall not be named <laughs> anyways <laughs> whose impression was next uh, did we get everybody for impressions yeah we're, Dave, we're, we, we went through them, bro. Dave, touched on a lot of good stuff yours. along the way too yeah I think so. Dave was second okay so yeah I think we got everybody's first impressions right. yeah and then like with uh, there's just so much enjoyable stuff in this you know, like it busts the pet shop owner when he's down, you know, dumping the corpses. And then the investigation leads him, leads our main detective to the pet shop owner who he's able to trace back to the lab where that doc, where the doctor works. And then there's this whole conspiracy involving the mayor and the owner of the chemical company. And the reason the alligator is huge is because they're the pets that they're dumping in the sewer are pumped full of experimental growth hormones. Like there's, there's a, yeah. The old lady. Yeah. There's a nice scene where this old lady is like, this looks just like my dog. Like this sweater fit her last month when she mm -hmm. disappeared. And it's this tiny sweater and this dog is enormous. Well, and it's one like thing a, I never really thought of before, but like she talks about how the dog just randomly disappeared the, the cop, when he's buying the dog, says that yeah. his dog just randomly disappeared. And they're right. all clearly from the neighborhood because you're not driving across some metropolitan area or whatever to buy a fucking puppy. So, obviously, that dude's stealing their dogs after he sells them to them. Exactly. Right. So, which is why, you know, he deserves to get alligatored. And he does, <laughs> spectacularly. So there's also a joke in there too, like when they find uh, when like his parts wash up. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, it's like you know we found another body. You know he was wear what he was wearing alligator wingtips because yeah, they find like his foot great. and it was like ah. Uh... <laughs> but uh, anyway, so after that, you know the cops go and they check out the sewers. Our Robert Forster's partner gets eaten. And uh, poor Kelly, man. Yeah, he was just starting to like him too. And that scene where he gets pulled away, you could tell that guy like he really acted out because we kind of glossed over how previously his partner had been killed, you know. And there's that mm -hmm. reporter that keeps making the digs at him about it and stuff. Um, and that scene where that where poor old Kelly gets ripped away, you could see it on that. That dude killed it with you can like see it on Robert that, Forster's face, it's like, yeah, no, all not over. Again. And he is like he's like traumatized like that we come back to him like in the hospital it's like where am i oh it's been a couple of days uh well you emerged from mad hole and just started screaming about alligators yeah it's like well i wonder <laughs> why i almost made a post on facebook like man i really hope one day i get to emerge from a manhole and scream alligator because it just <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like a good bucket list thing uh, you know what uh, that'd be pretty fun to watch i i, I I, I somewhat enjoy, uh, enjoy the fact that uh, that somebody put a rubber alligator in his locker, too. Uh, oh, they, uh, the cop gags. It's like with the condoms <laughs> and lethal weapon, you know? Oh, oh yeah, that, was, that, that. Was a great, that was a great little moment. So after uh, after that, the reporter goes down to the sewer to like look for himself, and he runs right into the alligator, and he gets owned. But at the very least, like his camera survives, and so pictures of the alligator are in the paper, and everybody knows about it. 
And then there's kind of like an alligator hysteria. Like there's a guy selling like rubber alligators. It's like, see him. What? What's? What's the? I don't remember what the that's, beginning of the line is. He has like a jingle. That he's trying to sell like these toy alligators. Right. See him shake. Oh, see yeah. him wiggle. Make you laugh. Make you giggle. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want to know how they got them so quick. They just like uh, they just like. Well, they're just like dollar store things. toys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not, you know, this isn't meant in, in any kind of like humorous way, but Chinatown, bro. That's where you go to get stuff like that. I to mean, sell when uh, you know, these flea market guys people do it all the time. Yeah. These guys knew what to do and when to do it. I mean, they were just like, yeah, we're, we're going to, uh, we're going to make sure that we get this stuff and we're going to sell a uh, boatload of alligator stuff. Oh, yeah, and I think the best mm -hmm. part is some guy who tries to sell the cops yeah. <laughs> a baby alligator. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, what started well, this man. entire mess? It's like, hey, pal, look what I got. And he shows him the baby alligator. He goes for 20. And he just kind of, like, puts his arm around him and, like, steers him into, like, the uniformed yeah. officers. And he's like, hey, you want to do me a favor and book this guy? Hey, what yeah. for? For being a creep. Possession of an endangered species. And, like, yeah. as he's being, like, Cuffed, he's like, This is an attack on the free enterprise system, communist. Uh, <laughs> and I love that line <laughs> so much. <laughs> I, I did enjoy that, especially, yeah. Just like, even though I have some serious issues with the way the Endangered Species Act is enforced, I the concept is there for a reason, and so I definitely enjoyed that scene because that's like. It's it's the whole principle of like okay, I, I need to I need some quick cash. What am I going to do? I want to rob the donut shop next to a, a police station. You know, it's that sort of thing almost. <laughs> communist. It's like, hey, you're not letting me break the law, communist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Which is arguably how most people, unironically, use communism nowadays. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, hey, idea. I wanted to be. Hey, why can't I dump this toxic sludge in the river? Communism. All right. All right. Uh, but that's that's one of my own digressions there. But. Mm. <laughs> but that's just that whole scene. And then, uh, well, and that, like the that's where the, they really yeah. start taking them serious. You know, like before mm -hmm. that, everyone's kind of like pff, pff, alligators in the sewer. Come on, bro. Right. You know. And then after the reporter dies, and I love how they put it, like the reporter snaps his own death photo on the, the newspaper. That shit was dope. Because back then they published crap like that sometimes too, you know? This is the age of like the Inquirer when they did like car accident right. issues and stuff, you know? So I thought that yeah. was cool. Yeah, that was, that was a good touch, I thought. And it definitely sells. It's like, okay, well, everybody knows about it now. So it kind of gets that out mm -hmm. of the way. And then like with the hunt, like they don't find it and it's forced to like make a way out in perhaps the most unrealistic thing a movie alligator has <sighs> ever done. It just God, do I love it. it. That is my favorite Ooh. scene. It's on the foreign movie posters. And I actually have a German I have a German movie poster for alligator. Der whore alligator. And that's the art on it. It's the alligator Fuck yeah. rushing up through the street, like pushing over a car. So question, like with that stuff, obviously with that scene, they did it kind of kaiju style. I've been watching a lot of those movies lately. Uh, but the other stuff, did they build sets to scale the alligator or did they superimpose the alligator? So what, they, to... what they did was they had their animatronic alligator like bust through the fake street. Yes. And then they had a scale model. And so they, then they had like a model of the street and they had like the live alligator like walk down that that's why its proportions like radically change I, I love it yeah it's like it's just classic kaiju shit you know and that's what they yeah. do in those to to, oh. to make things to scale and oftentimes if you watch the movies the scale changes like king kong style. Uh, so uh actually out of uh out of curiosity because of the um your real life experience and knowledge of these creatures do you feel like an alligator could have uh, busted through the uh, concrete street like that? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
what if it was proportionately sized to be able to do it? I mean, I realize maybe not at 35 or whatever. Yeah, feet maybe if it had been feeding off of the Milwaukee was... beer. You know? <laughs> yeah, that might have done well, the trick. I'm telling you. If it was 35 feet long, it would be an insanely powerful animal, but I don't know if it could actually smash through concrete that way. So you never know. It's, if he's drunk, if it was drunk, those drunk Kyles would <laughs> be punching through the drywall and shit, man. So I bet you that gator could make it through the street. I don't know. Hey guys, um, I need to work tomorrow, so can I um, do my thing? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Here we'll we'll give Dane. Uh, yeah. We'll let Dane finish his thoughts on alligator. Yeah, I mean, you guys have kind of said it all, and I mean, I I don't really have a whole lot more to add, but um, yeah, I'm I'm Dane Kyle, aka Dane Damarung, on YouTube. I'm on the channel Indie Horror Film Creative, where I do. A show called Blu-ray Views, uh, where I do a lot of unboxings and showing off of the collection as it as it grows, and then I'll expand to No Money Film School, uh, which is going to be a new series. And then, as hopefully the coronavirus winds down, my filmmaking efforts will resume. Um, and yeah, I just um, I'm thankful to have another job. Uh, you know, when a lot of people lost their jobs, including me. Uh, so now that I have one, I want to make sure I get a halfway decent night's sleep so that way I can have a productive day tomorrow. So that's why I'm doing this now. So I will bid all of you fine fellas adieu. Uh, Good night, adieu. buddy. Take care. Take care. See you later, dude. He sounds so sleepy. Yep. He's here. He can sleep in the fucking pocket of my hoodie like a little baby kangaroo. Oh. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. I almost wonder if that would work. I, I have no idea how tall Dane is. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm I'm like I put him in the scale with the Blu-ray. I'm starting, I'm starting to get tired now too. That's a that's a sleepy time thought. No, it's just something that makes no sense. <laughs> it's like, wait, where's the logic in that? What? <laughs> it sounds cozy though. Don't the it? Anyway, <laughs> so uh, I got room the... for one in the pocket, one in the hood, you know. <laughs> Anyway, so after the alligator escapes, it starts to slink around the suburbs, and we go into kind of a hunt, an extended hunt for it, and then we get that pool scene. Yes. Oh, well, my God. Good. And at this point, Robert Forster's <laughs> character has been, I think, taken off of the case. Like, You're you off know, the case, David. The, yeah. the hunter yeah. from fucking Jumanji <laughs> comes in there and takes the case from him, and then he's That's running good. around yeah. like trying to hire local yeah. youths to die in the sewers, you know? Yes, uh, they have Henry Silva as Brock. He's, he's, he's an interesting character. An because, interesting. Because, uh, he's just like a douchebag uh, big game uh, hunter, pretty much. Like, he, yeah. His character is very... Uh, Stereotyp- stereotypical, I guess you could yeah. say. And he's pretty much there to just, you know, be overconfident and die. But that was what makes right. his character fun because it's like, you know, I know what I'm doing. I'm awesome. And it's like, no, oh, it's just owned. <laughs> it's kind of a stretch because, you know, in what I'm reality do the, the police of a major city hand the investigation over to a fucking big game hunter? I mean, True. The, the, the snake lady made sense calling in a consultant, but like, what? You take the main detective who did the whole thing off the case. That doesn't. Well, because he was starting, he was starting to connect the. Uh, actually, the scene where he's, the scene where David's where the detective is fired uh, ties into the investigation he's been doing. Oh, uh, okay. He's yeah, figured duh. it's like, hey, chief, I got the goods on the alligator. You know, the mayor and the big guy at Slade Pharmaceuticals, like they're up to their eyeballs in it. Yeah, because he's figured out it's like, oh, the reason the alligator is big, the growth hormones that they're dumping in the sewer from those right, animals. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And the big, huge corporation and the mayor, I mean, they like literally and figuratively run the fucking city. So mm-hmm. it's everyone's jobs on the line kind of thing. Exactly. And so that's what gets him fired. So, mm-hmm. but I don't, I think the pool happens before Brock gets nailed. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing with the pool, uh, with the pool incident. You, you kind of expect it, and yet you don't really expect it because you you know that he's living yeah. there. It's very graphic. You, you know, uh, he falls into the pool in daylight, uh, but uh, but now that the party is going uh, on, yeah, when there's... the kid gets pushed up on, on the fucking th- uh, uh, thing, 
and, yeah, and he gets little, pushed off. There's a little kid's birthday party, and he's dressed yeah. like a cowboy, and these other kids are playing pirates, oh, and they tie him up, and they make him, like, walk the plank, but the little yeah. kid can see the alligator in the pool with its mouth open, and he's going, no, no, don't do it, and they just push mm -hmm. him in, and the alligator just kills him in, like, a giant spray of blood, and my mind was not ready for that when I was a little kid. Oh, oh, man. Man. It's, so it's, right up. it's like it's like worse than blood sucking freaks fucked up, actually. Yeah, Dude, it, it, honestly, it is. It's go ahead, sorry. <clears throat> did they cross the line by like did they cross no. the line by killing the kid? There's I no line. Think, the line's imaginary. Uh, yeah. You draw that yourself when you when you decide how far your it limits was, are. That's well, that. looking at I, it, looking at that scene as an adult, it was more tastefully done than I remembered. And once kind of the shock oh, wears yeah. off, like, well, okay. Well, when you're that size, you it's that. like, holy shit! Because most can, movies I don't kill the little it, kid you know? too. I've right. always thought I know that you killing have... the kid in a movie right. or not killing the kid in the movie is. I've always thought that just is a bitch move. The yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I really do think that uh, that a lot of the movies have managed to modern movies have managed to get over that that sort of almost prudishness that uh, one could look at for uh, that. I mean, that's how something a joke, of course, like the one in uh, something like Feast, for instance. Which one of these days we'll have to cover the feast series? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I mean, is it there because you think to them it's like, well, they're too chicken to kill a kid off. Yeah, and, but in truth, that that actually adds to the uh, to the section to the risk. Nowadays, mm -hmm. if you see a modern movie, you're not as uh, likely to say, mm, well, it's a kid character. They can't possibly kill that kid off. But uh, yeah, but I mean, there is something to be said about maybe not killing him in as graphic a fashion as has been done in the past. You know, like when they did oh. it back in these days, they made it count. Case in point, the pool scene or like the scene in the Beyond where the, he splatters the little girl from Wendy's face all over the fucking screen. You know, uh, there's like the Blob where it's just like a super shocking moment where like the Blob. Oh like, god! It, like oh holy shit! Yeah, like, you don't think that's gonna happen, and then he just gets dissolved i love it but that's how it should be with most kills in horror movies you need to make those kills count right you really do and uh, and the same thing goes and kids they should count extra just because yeah they need it's to like, be there it should be, I mean, it should be like a big despair kind of moment yeah if killing the main characters like fucking yeah. you know a solid 100 points killing a kid should be at least like 75 you know uh, I'm not saying that I want to see kids get killed either. Let's make that <laughs> distinction right here for the listeners. That's it's a fucking movie, point. man. We, we, you yeah. know, the, it's a movie. It's a horror film. When they kill the kid, like Brandon said, that's how you know all bets are off because n you know they're they're now, they're not pulling punches here with us. Exactly. Exactly. Like, and they do they actually do that in Roger Corman's Dino Croc, which is a it's a sci-fi movie. It's one of the first sci-fi movies, kind of from that era of like the sort of low budget CGI like monster movie that sci-fi was really into in like the mid aughts. Uh and they they kill they kill the little brother from Lizzie McGuire in that movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm they down already. Fly toward the camera. I mean that's, they are that's not beautiful. Subtle. Let's um, do it. Uh, you know, that's probably great. It's not quite the Academy Award winning material we have on our hands with this beast, though. It's not uh, like a, it's not like a painful per se moment in terms of like how sad it is. It's more so like the effect is pretty unbelievable in Dino Croc. So it's like, oh, shit, they did that. <laughs> like, you don't you feel bad, but not as bad as you do for this one where there's like that element of like tear and anticipation, like in the person being killed which oh, I, and i've always had like a phobia of the pool at night man so like the the crocodile thing didn't help as a kid i'm sure like oh yeah and just kind of you know alligators in pools that does happen mm -hmm. frequently and anyway so uh after that so the guy who runs the pharmaceutical company and the mayor like they're having a they're having like a wedding reception because the scientist is marrying his daughter 
And the alligator appears at that and just annihilates the people that created it. <laughs> in probably one of the movie's more satisfying scenes. It is kind of sad that it like gets some of like the help staff first though. Like I think doesn't it isn't its first victim at that party like a maid who was just standing oh, yeah. yeah. well yeah. isn't it what you said is that uh, that uh, whole social uh, that social experiment where you where the crocodile where the thing just uh, goes from one class to the next and just works its way up so it has to go to the maid yeah it won by the through. end too it's yeah. just yeah. killing everyone it's it like it's climbing the, go the rich person first it's got to keep going up you know it's, it's too early <laughs> I do got to point out that it's unfortunate none of these fine folks thought to throw some finger sandwiches and, and other gourmet foods at it so that maybe the croc would have developed a taste for the finer things instead of human flesh and they could have tamed it and you know oh, I, doubt <laughs> it. I think that'd oh, yeah, be pretty awesome dude. Yeah, I've been yeah. watching too much oh. fucking kaiju movies <laughs> 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 I think one of oh, my yeah, favorite things that scene no, is it. like the scientist responsible for the growth hormone. Like it kind of cuts away. Like you see him, like you see him running. Like I think he just like ditches. Like he fucking locks the mare out of the car. I love that part. He's just and like, no, nope, sorry, God, dickhead. And, and they, 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 they look they're... back, and the scientist is just being like chewed up, like like shook like a dog <laughs> boy almost. And I swear uh, to God, they're like yeah. throwing pails of uh, red paint all over the place just to make sure that it's a bloodbath. Yep. <laughs> they did. Like, the alligator can't get to him in the car, so the alligator crushes the car after eating the mare. And uh, that was an intense. Scene. That was a nutty scene. Like they have, they just show the alligator's tail like crushing the car, and I think that that was done with just like a tail. Yep, like, they didn't use the full animatronic for that. Like they don't just, like, quote me on this exactly, but I believe in kaiju movies they call them uh, maketsu, and it just means a model that you use on scale for like you know the foot crushing some shit or whatever. Uh, Brandon would probably and, know that. <laughs> Is that correct? Uh, I, I do not know that, but that would definitely be a. Uh, I would definitely give that one to Mo because he's been doing all the kaiju all the time. So confirmed. Yeah, right. The word might be slightly inaccurate, but that's definitely along the lines of the it, idea. You know? so those models that they use, you know, where it's and usually it's like a Godzilla foot or a <laughs> tail or a tentacle or some shit. You know? Oh, we yeah. actually missed uh, we missed Brock's death, which I think happens before that too. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Brock finds Brock is tracking the alligator after the pool incident. Either before or after the pool incident, I can't actually remember. Um, uh, I think it's after, and he, you know, that's another good spot that highlights those class differences because he immediately yeah. goes down to like the seedy part of town and tries to pay some local homies to go in there. And they're like, I don't know about this shit. That sounds pretty fucking stupid. And he <laughs> manages to convince them with money, and it's pretty it's fucked like, up. But he gets his, and they get away, if I remember right. So. <laughs> he's like, yeah. the, the, the bearers go with the hunter into the lair. And he's actually, he's actually pretty. He's not like openly, openly racist, but you can tell it's like one of those. Th it's it's casual class racism, I think. You know, like yeah. it's it's not that he's being sense. racist like, out of hate. It's hate like guys do. Yeah, he's. And, it's, I was just about to say like, that he's. I don't know what jungle you think you're in, but like they're clearly mm -hmm. offended, and he just doesn't seem to like care. Well, he does yeah, that, I'm yeah. sure, on all those big game hunts where he goes exactly. to the village and he's you like, don't, yeah. He doesn't necessarily mind that he dies, you know, because fuck this guy. Yeah, he sucked. <laughs> and well, the alligator yeah. like, surprises him from, like, the side of the alley, like, bro, ah, wham. It actually helps that I watched uh, uh, on a given Sunday uh, not too long before I watched oh, this. I haven't so. seen that in a bit. Oh yeah, that's just like uh, that. That doesn't make me uh, any more uh, sympathetic. <laughs> I just above the law, man, with Steven Seagal. That's so immediately because I don't think I really I was seeing those movies as a kid as like a mm -hmm. maelstrom of shit, you know, horror movies oh, yeah. and then like martial art movies from my stepdad and stuff. I don't know if you call mm -hmm. Steven Seagal movies that anymore. But, uh, oh, 
you know, I love, I love angry Steven stepdad Seagal kung movies. fu films. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, in 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 above the law, he just freaked me out when he's like yeah. putting the truth serum to him and telling him how they used to cut up guys in Vietnam and stuff. Like, if you want to see a truly bone chilling experience by that dude, where he's playing less of a yuck yuck big game hunter and more of a true scumbag, above the law is worth hitting up. That's Any of those first like. Uh, I was gonna so say fire that, him below. That that's the best. He Steven wasn't Seagal in that, was he? No, but that's the last good Steven Seagal movie for for yeah. my money. That was a good one. Oh, well, anyway. Uh, uh, yeah. So after that, then we have the mansion scene that we j- and the garden party that we just discussed. And after it's taken out, those guys, the alligator returns to the sewers. And so they they take the radio from Crazy Guy. And some dynamite, which I think might have belonged to Crazy Eye. So I'm not. Sh- it's kind of unclear whether or not he had a bomb that didn't work, or or he had an actual bomb and they just like non dynamite him. Actually, <laughs> no. Uh, I-, I can tell you right there, just because um, that actually I found more fascinating. Because again, I deal in this as a profession. That's just my. Uh, I've actually dealt with people who think this way. The uh, the guy was actually sitting there talking about how the radio was talking to him. To me, I actually thought, I guessed the whole thing beforehand, that it was a radio. Uh, because, again, the radio was talking okay. to him. Again, he might have understand. thought he did have a bomb. Again, yeah, it's the, it's the radio. So he brought the radio with him with the timer, so the radio could go off and then deliver his message. Now, again, this is they not They were dropping charges people... in the lake t- Sorry, bud. Yeah. Uh, didn't mean to cut uh, you off, but I think yeah, the dynamite really, came yeah, from the, the lake. Where they're trying to throw like grenades at the alligator, and it goes pretty poorly for them. So, yeah. well, anyway, what, what were you saying there, Brandon? I don't want to spoil that. Uh, actually, I found that I found the scene with the mental health. I don't really know if I considered that anything more than an establishment for the characters themselves, because really, that's all it did was establish his nonchalant like i'm a badass type character but at the same time i did like how that they how they did that and how they treated that because well, nine times well nine times out of ten you're gonna get somebody with us with who is a schizophrenic who has these type of things they're not dangerous even when they act like they are dangerous they really aren't dangerous. It's only like that one percent that are. So well, I did yeah. like that they that they were tasteful enough to actually say, "Oh well, actually no." He thought about just putting the radio there. So I do give that as kudos to the movie. Well, and the way they handled it too, man. Like he was panicking at first because when Kelly was like fingering his fucking piece, Forrester's like, "Yo, dude, chill out, chill the fuck out, like, dude." And then when he clearly sees that it's like gone. They don't have enough time left. That's when he pulls the I'm just going to walk out and then rush them thing. Uh, so he was taking it serious at first, at least enough. And that he was, you know, he didn't just go full badass right away. Oh, he yeah. took the, you know, a moment to discern whether this was as serious of a threat as it seemed to be. And I thought that was like a nice little touch on the scene myself, you know. I, I mean, I really did actually like that as an establishing scene, and I did feel like it did better than uh, it was a scene that I didn't think should have been ignored entirely, just because I do like that. But again, that's more of a personal thing, more well, like uh, Dustin, how you it's more personal on the uh, level of uh, the reptile for me, mental health, anything mental health yeah. is more on a personal level. I mean, that's just, that's my specialty. That's what I've got all my education in. And I spent 20 years of, uh, 20 years of my career. And boy, that's kind of sad. Yeah, a lot of good you've done, dude. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of good you've done in the world for people like that, you know? And it's, uh, I, I, you know, not even not coming from it, that scene stuck out to me. So I'd say, honestly, that's probably one of the, the better scenes in the movie that is non-crocodile sort of related, I guess. Yeah. Well, anyway, as we race toward the end here, so they get that stuff from the evidence room, and they follow the alligator down to the sewer where they set a bomb, and well, pretty decisively kill the kill the alligator. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's not an ambiguous. It's like, oh, did they get it? It's like, no. You see, its head explode. It's, 
nice and meaty. They yeah. actually they actually got in some trouble with that because uh, so it's like okay, we have to blow up the alligator, and then oh, they blow the manholes without permission. Well, the, the producers kind of stepped in and they were like, actually, we have somebody who wants to buy the alligator when you're done with it. So uh. <laughs> I think they have to actually, like, shoot that and then repair it. Oh, my God. Uh, it was, it was uh. awesome. all about like Florida Gators or whatever. And it was their team mascot for like 20 years or something. That's pretty fucking rad, actually. That's a cool mm. legacy for this movie, for well, sure. I'm not sure if it's actually true. But then again, I don't know anything about sports, and I didn't really double check it. Like that's just what well, they found on the DVD. <laughs> much like the Gators in the sewers to begin with, we're gonna let that be an urban legend, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I, I like to believe it's true. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I like to uh, to believe that it's tr uh, true about the alligator drinking beer from the walking too. So oh, it's true mm -hmm. somewhere. <laughs> I'll guarantee you well, somewhere hey, maybe, some maybe badass maybe. islander guy is feeding a gator beer. Like it's maybe just a thing that's happening. Yeah. Because the final shot of the movie is another baby alligator plopping out of a pipe into the sea. <laughs> and again, <laughs> Betty White is feeding it. And the <laughs> <laughs> I've been so radicalized by this current year. <laughs> uh, such a journey. But anyway, so awesome movie. Love it. Uh, let's try to quickly hit our other topics. So we've talked about the effects. The effects for the most part are pretty effective. Like their animatronic alligator is like, it's passable. And then the scenes where they use the real alligators, yep. like. Great touch. Oh yeah. On the one hand, it works. On the other hand, they use like a different alligator like every time they do it, so it kind of, kind of really throws you off. It can, you know, but it's like one of those things where if you're just letting it work, because see, uh, maybe again, this is a byproduct of watching so many kaiju movies lately. But you learn to sort of like suspend the disbelief on the scale and yeah, the, the little details like that so it's like you just let it blend together and you believe that it's just this one creature and man is alligator effective at blending the the scenes where it's the real gator with the others i mean of course you know it's fake There's but it's cool work, but most of them are pretty are pretty effective yeah, most of them are pretty good they succeed more often than they fail with it i would say i would say so too mm -hmm. anybody else have something for effects no, not particularly. No. I would say that uh, the initial scene where the alligator rolls the guy's leg off is pretty fucking horrifying and one that tends to get overlooked if you're just watching, like, because it's the right at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, it opens you know? up an alligator show, which is where the kid gets the idea to buy the pet out, the little alligator in the first place. <laughs> they shredded some redneck's leg. I should probably get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I did like that the, uh, I did like that the actual creature, I mean, the alligator itself came from uh, the individual that was one of the major antagonists throughout the film. So I used to have so, a, yeah. when, I was, when I was, or, or the reptile exit expert uh, that was, that was, yeah, the, that was his alligator. name was Ramon. You know, <laughs> There's, there's a gag at the beginning of Alligator 2 where it's Ramon versus whoever and the new and the non-Ramon wrestler like beats the crap out of Ramon. Oh, and yeah. it's meant to be like the oh. new alligator. <laughs> Do we need to see Ramon but like grown to like fucking 40 foot in size versus like a scale version of the Gorton's fish stick man. I think that would be like an epic American kaiju movie right there. That is brawling funny. it out over some halibut or something. I don't I, know. I'm not sure how to respond to that. <laughs> he's just coming at he's just coming at Ramon with like those big those sticks, those those hooks they used to pull the tuna up. You know what I mean? Anyway, the music on this uh <laughs> from what I can tell, there's really only there's really only one theme in the whole movie. Like Alligator has a pretty cool score, but you hardly ever hear it. Uh, True, and it's not something you can actually get your hands on either. So I think there's uh, one YouTube clip of the main theme. Like you can get the main theme. I once had somebody who Craig had, like a record label like look into it, and apparently you could get the rights to the music, but you know how would you even go about? So Craig Huxley is the mu uh, music okay. composer behind the. The thematic uh, theme of this, and uh, believe it or not, he is behind some of the music in the Orville. 
Um, so, uh, some of the music behind 10 Cloverfield Lane, Star Trek II Wrath of Khan. Oh. Um, hmm. And uh, he's done a lot of work uh, behind the scenes with some of the Michael Jackson uh, documentaries that have come out. Maybe we can um, email him. It's like, hey, uh, do you have sound files for Alligator? <laughs> <laughs> I've to you know, up asking he, people about just, he, so that might work. he did some stuff for Dr. Sleep. So, oh, sick. Hmm. I, oh, that was pretty cool. It, it, was, it was amazing. Like, I think I like it better than The Shining, frankly. I do too. But, uh, I need to watch Dr. Sleep, so I can't really tell you. I mean, so it's, <laughs> it's pretty good. Like, you'll you should be very happy with it. Watch the extended cut. <laughs> it's just um, one of those things on my definite watch list, you know. The director's cut. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so what was everybody's favorite? Like thing. Oh, the oh. pool scene. Even though I I hated it, I it, that pool scene just gets me every time. It definitely sticks with you. How about you? <laughs> it does. If I had to, ch I mean, it's probably because of the. I, I I'm gonna write the fucking the breaking through the street scene off as like being a favorite right now because of the the kaiju shit that I've been watching. But oh. I think if I had to choose an overall, it's that first time that they, you know, when he's behind him when they're looking at the map, like we talk. About. It's just so creepy, man. Yeah. Like, those... that's what you think of when you think of the whole, you know, alligators, alligators and the sewer thing. Extremely scary in that scene. Like, you don't mm -hmm. look at it, but oh, my God. And, and that's what I makes think, it scary. I think those are those are my favorites, too. So and um, all right. Who was next? Uh, Brandon or Jake? Oh, well, either case, uh, I can say that my favorite is obviously the whole street scene where he break, where the alligator just breaks right through the darn concrete. Oh, yeah. It's such a I mean, I, I stop I, I, at the moment, and I'll admit, uh, my, my least favorite thing about the movie is I was a little bit bored about it for a little bit, but... That scene, it just, it, I, I, it, it makes me, uh, it makes me pay attention. I was just like, heck yeah. This well, that little kid awesome. is such a beast, man. Like he runs up in there. His mom's drinking a tall boy. She don't give a fuck, which is probably why he's so <laughs> savage, you know? Oh yeah. yeah and I'm he just grabs like, a yeah. knife. Like he, he, he sees it face. eat a cop savagely. And then he's like, I'm going to fuck this alligator up. <laughs> and he runs up oh, yeah. to his apartment and he gets a knife and he comes back out ready to shank that bitch. <laughs> oh yeah, I was just like that's like this is where the movie becomes awesome right here. <laughs> and right now. I am just like trying to ask him questions like how big was it? Was it as big as him as she points at as she points at the detective and he's and the kid's like, "You know an El Dorado?" Yes. The car? No, the refrigerator. Yeah, the car. It was as big as the as a car? It's like, well, you yeah, tail, but yeah. you got to add the tail too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's terrifying uh, to think about, you know. I, I, that's I, probably I, if I had to put out a main. Colorado was a boat of a car, anyway. So, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> if I had to put out like a, a lowest aspect of the movie, I think it's that the scale of because okay, most people, I'm one of them. I can't just look at something and tell you that's forty five feet. Like forty five feet sounds long to me, so. Again, drawn back to the kaiju stuff, like if something is supposed to be so many meters, you make it actually to scale visually a few meters higher so that it doesn't like fall short of people's expectations. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. with the creature, it's like it doesn't feel like a 40 foot alligator almost to me. I think it something like in hard. terms of like Lake Placid felt better to scale of what you think of when when well, you hear all, that yeah. those they numbers. Have very limited know. technology at this time too, and they oh, probably were right. thinking about. Yeah, that I mean, you know, we do get. So it's not something that I would after, like, you know, way too heavily against my opinion of the movie, but it is something that I noticed. Yeah. Well, after that scene, uh, there's like a real brief thing where like she's they find some footprints and she's taking a cast of its footprint and its foot's like two feet across it's just like ridiculous she's just like looking at it it's like well i, I what <laughs> just kind of well you'd probably know it. more than us but like at the you know again like you said about the weight like i don't know if a two foot across 
alligator track would necessarily equate to a almost 40 foot creature it know? probably would honestly um uh, because that is yeah, well yeah two feet is bigger too than again there it comes back to the scale like i mean yeah that footprint that the, that cast that they hold up is it's big yeah, it's crazy so i mean it's big for sure when she says 35 feet like i can easily believe that uh what about you jake what was your favorite um i think you know as for usual nothing really floated to the very top but uh I like that part with that kid. I again, I, I admit that kid was uh, when he ran out with the knife. It was pretty he's funny. A, he's a fucking G, dude. Exactly. And um, I want to go. And, I like how he's mad, mu- mean mugging the fucking cop too. He's like, "Get the fuck right. out of the neighborhood," you know. One of the guys trying to he, like, even after he put on the light, he's like, "We're playing stickball, motherfucker." Get out of here. <laughs> you know? And and I, and I do have to admit, the pool scene was the one that stuck in my mind the most. So, you know, it's, it's a terrible uh, that, that uh, come back to that old line. Terrible thing. Looked great. <laughs> <laughs> so, in terms of, you're kind of a sensitive. You're sensitive to gore. So, uh, how would you rate the gore in this movie? Like, well, wanting to see it, but given, have that. Given the, yeah, given the bad uh, visual quality, I probably didn't have. You could take this with a grain of salt, uh, but I found the movie quite watchable. I mean, there were a couple scenes that were iffy, but you know, for the most part, I didn't. It didn't trigger me. Like there were a couple parts in Crawl that made me cringe. Like there were a couple parts where he resets his bone. So you know, there were a couple parts that were like I was like, when he shot down (laughs) on her leg, that uh, that uh, that was it for me on that that film. So that. Yeah, this one was much more watchable on that regard. You know what well, I mean? It happens quick, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, dare I say, maybe, you know, chunk blower flan- fans like me and Dustin that have a, yeah. a, a more discernible eye for that shit caught yeah. more of it in those brief moments that they did show the gore. Yeah, right. It is the there. Are, the, when they're when they're throwing grenades at it, there's a cop who gets his legs bitten off, but they don't really, yeah. like, show a whole lot of it. Right. Like most of the gore in this is actually pretty manageable. Like if you have it's, like a, yeah. sort of thing, not I'd say moderate. It's not like a chewing like, off legs. The the thing yeah. blows up. You know, there yeah. there is those it's it's, it's it's a bit chunky and meaty, you know. But it happens in real quick cuts. At least mm-hmm. every cut of the movie I've ever seen. So it's not like in your face splatter. It, it just right. is gore. Yeah. That, now nowadays. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, you could probably show it uncut on TV without too much trouble. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's worse shit than Walking Dead, man. Yeah. I just wanted that evaluation out there because, you know, when we talk about that pool scene, like we make it sound like the funniest thing of all time. And no, it's more just the shock value. Just the, like I said, would they kill a kid? Oh my God, they killed a kid. Those kids are. Assholes. <laughs> well, but they did. They were also wearing semi blindfolds, if I remember. Yeah, they right. had like, like they were, and they well, didn't clearly were Yeah, they clearly weren't paying attention. But yeah. it's like you know, you know, those two kids are going to have years oh, of yeah. therapy because of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the way they course. make the alligator yeah. basically like half swallow him before you even yeah. see blood is just so horrifying to me, man. Like that's my oh. worst fear in the world is being like swallowed by something. This isn't like uh, Gamera, like where the uh, where the creature is like the kid's best friend. Yeah, or anything. he is not a friend to all children. Yeah. That's <laughs> not- <laughs> oh, there was a. I, I know this is, really, this is really horrible. This is really horrible. But when that happened, I thought of the arrogant worm song, "Rippy the Gator." <laughs> yeah. They're not going to be making a cheerful theme song for Ramon anytime soon. You know what I mean? <laughs> there was Rippy a. The Gator. There was a movie um, called uh, Man Eater that was interesting. Mm. It was a uh, movie about tigers, and it really did. It really did follow that concept of, oh yeah, these monsters, they're kids' best friends, and they're benevolent. Uh, which it wasn't because it killed the kid, and 
but that's the thing. Is, that's fucked up to laugh at, but you the know thing what I mean. Is it, is a, it plays on that expectation. and uh, Well, I'm when you watch Gamera, to... too, it's like, they do a good job, the Japanese, apparently, of, of evacuating people when a monster is attacking the city, but not everyone evacuates. Mm-hmm. You know damn well Gamera's killing some kids when he's going through those apartment complexes oh, yeah. just smashing well, the whole Gamera thing. Well, there, Gamera is not. Someone shot him in the next studio, so it's like... Dude, I have watched... Not eight Gamera right. movies in a row recently, and in every single one, he never makes a fucking clean landing. It's like some launch pad mm. McQuack shit where he fucking <laughs> crashes into the entire city. There's no warning. To, even if some kid says, oh no, Gamera! You fucking, you're dead before you even look out your window, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. well, did I hear something? And, and... Boom. Well, that's the thing. I can't quick. wait until I get that Gamera collection that's coming. Oh, um, I feel like to order that. Like, I'm waiting for some kind of sale like I did for the Godzilla set, mm. which I've been watching the Godzilla set, and I'm finally mm. on disc four. It's kind of a slow going because they don't have the dubs on there, so you have to watch in subtitles. Mm, and that's why I, bought that subtitles, I don't have a problem with it, but that means I have to sit and pay full attention. Like, I can't just have it yeah. on in the background mm. while I just... Yeah something it's i no need joke that's a higher yeah, priority yeah you got to watch every bit of it and then you see some of the stuff that could have been probably left to the imagination uh, <laughs> but that's the fun of the that shit you know exactly. I, I find it weirdly you know not i won't digress any further than this but i find it you know pretty unique the differences in themes and the differences the way the two series treat western actors like gamera is full of little white kids that speak perfect japanese somehow <laughs> and it's not dubbed like you can look at it and they're really speaking Japanese you know <laughs> like they just okay. the camera went the full nine yards and mm. instead of doing the Godzilla thing where they find an American actor to dub and then shoot like supplemental footage with yeah, for I, an American release camera I, just got I, white folks that knew the fucking language you know? I've only seen three of the original Gamera movies out of like what nine 11 eight, there's nine. eight in the Showa period and I mean, three in I the Hesse. The, unless you I saw the, the Heisei, I saw the Heisei and the Mo. I'm just gonna call it the Millennium one. Mm-hmm. I saw the last yeah, four, and then I've only seen versus Gurion versus Gaios and the original Gamera. So most of the other ones, like I never got to see versus Baragon, which the previews on those other ones. For versus Baragon made Baragon look like the most terrifying badass monster of all time. So I've, got well, I've only things. seen them on Mystery Science Theater except for Check the original this. one. Baragon so. is the best in the series, hands down, in terms of it might even be my favorite kaiju subplot of a movie ever. It's about jewel thieves and shit. So you could have that subplot and not even have giant monsters, and it would be fucking awesome. Really? Uh, hmm. And then, you know, Baragon is pretty sick. Uh, I would put him top three top five maybe villains it's it'd be hard to bump some of those ones out of the top three with 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 gear and you know uh or with paragon excuse me Giran is like right there in the top three for sure Gert, got, shoots okay. ninja stars out of his fucking face. He decapitates Gauss in like the first like ten minutes knife. of the movie. Like, I, yeah. I love that monster is just a knife. Yeah, he's just a, a fucking knife. knife. And, like, he just jumps around and cuts shit. You know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. See, so we're on turtles. So we're at least somewhat, still somewhat in time. Yeah, we're in the realm. I think we've hit all of our main points. So we should probably bring this to a somewhat merciful close. Definitely. So, <laughs> if you can find it, see alligator. Um, uh, mm-hmm. complain to Lionsgate that you want a new Blu ray release of it. We uh, want we want a proper Blu ray re- of it, so, uh, so we want it out of Lionsgate's mm-hmm. hands and into a proper company that knows or, how to handle their shit. Or, Great. or if Lionsgate is still doing the Vestron video series, I think they need like a number 19 and 20. So, Alligator 1 and 2, you could do it just like the Warlock set or the Wishmaster set. It oh, will yeah. make money, I guarantee mm-hmm. it. And I'd be glad to get if you want us to stop just China. stealing the movie or watching it on YouTube, you need to fucking put it out in a way that we can buy it. Stop being yeah. jerks. Oh, yeah. Stealing by watching on YouTube. True. Um, although I stole it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe don't admit that. 
it's out there. But, well, then again, it's so hard to see. I mean, it's it's kind of yeah. you kind of don't really have any options. I don't think you can even. I don't think you can even rent it on digital. Like I'm pretty, is, sure, no. I'm pretty sure you can't. One uh, of my many regrets video. on sleeping on the VHS sale that our video store did back in the day. I got some great stuff, great stuff. But I should I should show know. you my VHS stuff because I I collected VHS for a while and then it's kind of like I have no space for this. I can't play any of these. Yep, that's I got where it comes to. Well, well, I mean, I can play them. But... A DVD copy of any of the stuff that is not. I do have a VHS converter. Fuck, we might have to do a collab video where we show the, you know, our VHS collections or something, but that'd be fine. Maybe. Uh, but at any rate, so uh, right. well, I guess that's that's it for Alligator. So mm -hmm. it, it, again, if you can see it, it's freaking amazing. And, you know, even though the copy on YouTube is pretty crummy, you know, it's probably the best you're going to get for a while. So complain the Lionsgate, do it. Yeah, and I, I mean, I feel like that shouldn't have to be said, but don't flush your fucking pets down the toilet. Well, of course yeah. not. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what starts this whole mess and then restarts it, like, at the very end of the film. <laughs> so I am Dustin, also known as the Crypt of Horrors. I collect horror, well, anything, really, and show my stuff off on YouTube, where I do collecting videos uh, with... Increasing frequency. I have a few more. I, I just released everything I picked up from before the quarantine, and I filmed and am steadily releasing the stuff I picked up after quarantine. Uh, so a few of those, at least one of those, should drop within a day or two. Uh, I have an Instagram for my horror collection at the Crypt of Horrors, and you can interact with me on Twitter at DerCryptaxis which is going to become kind of my screen name for all my online horror stuff, Cryptaxis. So, yeah. You know, come follow me across all the different dimensions. Mm -hmm. And who wants I like how it works two ways, like Crypt Access and Cryptaxis. Like you're some type of fucking mm -hmm. space lord or something. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, what? Uh, I, I <laughs> just go with it. Yeah. Uh, I am... I am Mosley, and I often do videos for my own channel, which is Drunken Master Studios. Got some kaiju shit going on over there. Uh, just, you know, general horror stuff. I've been super fucking unproductive, but you know what? I'm going to start a new tradition tonight where instead of, like, just not having anything to say when I've been a lazy bastard, I'm going to recommend to you guys an absolutely random YouTube channel to check out. And tonight's recommendation is totally pointless TV. It is just this dude with probably one of the most abrasive yet super, super inclusive senses of humor I've ever seen. And he just absolutely rips into videos of fake Kung Fu masters, which is just a good time. Uh, much like the subgenre on YouTube of like stolen valor dudes that pretend to be Navy SEALs being exposed. If you like good cringe, if you like like just liars being caught in public and made to face the fucking shame of how shitty they are and also people getting beaten up uh the the fake martial arts stuff is is pretty awesome because they tend to challenge like mma fighters and stuff with their chi attacks and get totally worked so if you want to see some stuff like that pop on over to totally pointless tv sorry i'm unproductive <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, by the way, the director of this film also apparently directed Navy SEALs, if I remember correctly. So, <laughs> that's just fun. Wow, well, I own a couple of beers on that point alone, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm going to go next because I really do need to get to bed. Navy um, SEALs? What the hell is yeah, that from? Clerks. There it is. Yeah. Ooh, Navy SEALs. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm I'm going to be Jake. I am often on the YouTube channel Septum Sin vs. the World. It's been a little bit different lately with all the quarantine stuff going on, but it's still fun and we have a good time with it. And um, I am a collector, movie fan, uh, TV and anime fan here in Central Virginia. I have my 
Nature theme channel, Kotobuki Jake, also on YouTube that will eventually get updated. I, I, I plan it will be done. Uh, <laughs> and that's it for me tonight. No, Jake, if you don't I'm, eventually I'm, do that, I'm going to drive over there. I'm going to abduct it you will from happen. House, and it I'm going to take happen. you out into the woods. Yeah, he just installed You're just going to wake uh, up at a cabin, sorry, bro. I, I we're going to take him to the woods and have him make content. <laughs> yes. I, haven't yeah. the, I haven't installed the director software, so I can do more fun stuff than before. We'll recreate some scenes from those badass hunting humans movies where Jake oh, screams, and I'm like, ah! You know, I scream <laughs> along. Oh, I'm like, no one can hear you out here, motherfucker. All Film right. those butterflies. Well, do we it. all have a good. What's that? Do it, oh. I said. Yeah, and y'all have it. a good night. I'm get going. Take care. Sleep well. Yeah, I gotta get you. I won't be. Uh, I won't be long too, behind right you all, uh, actually. But uh, I'm Septum Sen of Septum Sen vs. the World, a weird channel that loves physical media and all of its uh, shapes or forms. Uh, mostly, we cover movies, but we do cover the occasional music, video game, or. Uh, book so with that being said of course uh we are uh adhering to the whole social distancing thing by uh meeting not so close together but thanks to the holiday uh it'll just be me unfortunately for you all this week but uh hopefully we will uh be uh together next week as we go so with that being said I also work with Inside Movies Galore on helping to decide what things and what themes are up in the future. Uh, we should hopefully be deciding on the themes within the next week or so. So uh, hopefully everybody's got that in mind for what they're going to vote for for July. And uh, But th this month and next month, it's all about the people who make up this channel and we've got two more left on our meet the cast uh which our next individual will be mo himself which i will leave oh, to yeah. uh, go ahead and introduce the uh two films that we're going to be covering next week go ahead uh, and tell that us about would... oh, baby. But certainly sir um that will definitely be video violence and uh, Darkness the Vampire version, two very, very low-budget splatter flicks that were hugely influential on my taste Like when I started getting into that stuff, especially like shot on video or really low-budget shit. So we're going to get a taste of both those. You know, uh, Darkness the Vampire version is more of a proper splatter film involving vampires in the tradition of like Dawn of the Dead or Evil Dead. A little, little mixture of both, you know, and video violence is just straight up what we would all do if we had a video store in our name and a fucking camera and some corn syrup. And I think that both of them are going to be a lot of fun. I think it's, it's definitely going to showcase something that yeah, has definitely been represented on this channel, but, uh, you know, maybe some, some, some movies that will like help you guys branch out into exploring more of that because they are pretty fucking fun. And I, I I've always viewed them as like the highest quality in both areas, you know, be it film or shot on video. Hey, if uh, you'll, uh, if you'll afford us those uh, IMDB pages, just uh, or something, or a page that shows it, so I can identify it, so I can start hunting that bad boy down. Uh, well, I will uh, do that. Video, you know. video violence is on a double feature thing with video camp, violence too. A, a, a camp motion pictures, and I believe the darkness uh, film that one's not the hard easiest one to get man that's no. one of those ones that's up there in like the 80 dollar range i think right now and yeah. it, which is just insane to me because i paid like 11 bucks for it at hastings back in the day but um <laughs> yeah we'll get you guys versions of those for sure and hopefully you know stuff like that i would like to see get re-released eventually oh, a, yeah. a lot of that stuff from camp's catalog needs to for sure because there's some of those that you can get, and then there's some that are ridiculously expensive. So, wow. just uh, uh, Massacre. Wood Chipper Massacre, which is like the worst oh, yeah. fucking one. Wood Chipper Massacre. Yeah. Like I oh, want it because I love badness, the movie. Badness at its greatest. Just the it name is. alone writes Dude, quite the check. 
it is literally a movie made by some kids while their parents were out of town for like the afternoon. <laughs> it's fucking, but it's fun and stupid. Uh, it's I, not worth seventy five dollars. I've though. seen people wear <laughs> shirts from that movie, so uh, so it's. I'd love to wear one, yeah, but yeah. you know, yeah, that, that's kind of what we're going to be working with for that. I think that we're all going to enjoy it. Those two selections, especially, I think will hit a lot of the marks for a lot of us, even if you know some of you guys can't look past the low budgetness of it. It'll be a fun discussion <laughs> to be sure. Um, hey, they said uh, there was an article that said uh, people who like bad movies and B level movies are actually. The most intelligent of us. So, hey, right there. <laughs> well, shit, dude. I'm a regular thoroughbred then. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that's pretty much what I got going on. Sub Rebel Gaming Club. Fuck with all these guys, of course. Especially Dustin. You know, check out his article. It's going to be linked in the description. It sounds like <laughs> really interesting reading. Especially if you have interest in reptiles. and re Really, who doesn't have interest in cool, scaly gross weird things so get on top of that immediately okay oh, yeah. and uh we we've done you uh brandon right yep okay uh your my, turn my name is david Stragi. i am the founding father of inside movies galore so thank you for coming along uh, with us on this uh fantastic journey that we have been going th uh, th uh, th uh, th through now that we've gone through this sewer Granddaddy Gator hands. himself, right here. Okay. Crawling on our hands and knees, uh, ju uh, just to get through this bastard. But uh, in any ca uh, 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 case, I also moonlight under a different channel called uh, Delusions of Grand Door. Definitely check that uh, 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 that um, channel out. I just recently went through and uh, reviewed the. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series, uh, and I've still got to put uh, put up my um, review of TMNT, and I'm probably going to go through the whole kit and caboodle just uh, just to end up at the at the end and ask you a question about where you think the series will go if they'll ever return to it. So um, definitely apparently, to weird, that. uncomfortable turtles with nostrils. That's <laughs> <laughs> but in any case definitely check those out um i was entertained but telling you my, my thoughts on the the uh, the uh, 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 films and uh whatnot my take and uh n next week for sure uh definitely check out uh mosley's um oh we forgot about that dude yeah uh me and brandon uh, we have a kaiju collab going down. The oh, yeah. Dai Kaiju collab or the Great Kaiju collab. Any of you guys want to send in clips showing off your kaiju collections? We'll be taking submissions all day tomorrow. Oh, Let, let's be real. I'll be taking them all day for the next two days until I edit it and publish it on Friday. So you want to get on that, Dave, Dustin, any of you guys are invited. Just throw your clips at me via YouTube, Dropbox, you know, Google I started, Drive, uh... whatever. So Magic has official like Godzilla art cards now, and I've been collecting Fuck those. Yes, that'd be sick to show off. I want, dude, if you want to do a clip, I don't Friday's have that many. Of, well, I do have kind of a lot of them, but I don't have like the impressive ones. Like I have the cheap ones because Ghidra is like seventy dollars. Still, a lot of people probably don't know that exists, and that would be super cool to show. Okay, just, I'll, uh, you know, I'll the, get some the whole for public. You. Uh, this is this first one's mainly about us just showing what we have in our collection now and trying to illustrate some type of efficient way for people to collect either the Godzilla or the Gamera films. So that's that's basically what this one's about. If uh, it goes good in the future, we'll do favorite kaiju creatures, characters, you know, movies. Well, if in anybody general, has the figure that. arts destroy it that they want to like trade me for not one of my limbs, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, hook that shit up. And you know, I just want to announce this little PSA right here. If you are suffering from male pattern baldness as a result of alligator, <laughs> you may be entitled to compensation. So contact the law offices of James Sokolov immediately. <laughs> Mesothelioma, all that. <laughs> <laughs> Mesothelioma. Yes. In any ca a case. Stay tuned for more exciting uh, uh, stuff on uh, on this uh, month of Meet the Cast. So more mayhem. <laughs>
enjoy the discussion, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out.